They should be. Ah. We'll ask you to be. been a day um now back on our parenting series we have a beautiful guest here mm -hmm. that is going to talk to us uh, you know we're going to learn lots about um parenting as well and i know you're going to get one or two or three um tips from our from our experience as a mother we're just trying to be honest we're trying to bring it out here so that you know that you're not alone or if you're I have some people that say, though, I don't want to become a mother. I have a friend of mine who was 50, no, 65 years now. And then she said, I wish I have one child for them. I think based on the experience she had, it's sad enough to have a child. Um, maybe somebody's out there thinking, I don't want to have a child, maybe because of your experience or something. Learning from us might give you, you know, um, a way forward. So, yeah, it's not that bad or okay. If they do it, I can actually do it. I need a child as well. So there's so many things that we're going to learn. So I'm just going to allow her guest here, <laughs> my beautiful friend, <laughs> to introduce herself to us. Thank you so much for honoring this invitation. She'll be our guest and then she'll be open. We're going to learn from her. Let's just let her introduce herself. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> thank you, Nikki. My name's um, Caroline, Caroline Wren. And um, yeah, I'm a single mother and I've reared my daughter, um, Rachel, and she is now 20 years of age. And um, I reared her in Ireland, though I spent quite a, a bit of my life in England. In, uh, most of my youth was spent in London, actually. Um, but I came back here and met her father and then um, had Rachel shortly thereafter. Um, so, and we've been living in County Clare um for the last well since 1998 i've been living in county clare so basically wow. she would she was reared here and she was educated here um the first i think for the about the first year of her life we we spent in limerick when she was like from three months old so i lived in limerick for for about a year but then i moved back to shannon so um yeah so that's kind of our beginnings so thank you so much for that so where are you from originally okay i'm originally from um england i was born in lancashire and bolton and my parents came back over to ireland um then when i was five years of age yes. so i came back to ireland both my parents are irish and um, so we i lived in shannon actually where i live presently so i was educated reared and educated in shannon and then i left um shannon when i was 19 I went to London, um, that was around 1984, and I spent then the next um, about 12 years in London, and I came back here in about 1998. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's it. So you're British? So, the, yeah, so my birth cert is British, so British, I consider okay. myself both, you know, oh, Irish right. blooded, Irish but, very, so, but yeah. very strong connections yeah. with Britain. Yeah, yeah, so, very strong. yeah. yeah. So you're dual national nationality. My nationality would be Irish, Irish. but I mean it, it can be dual. Yeah, it can yeah, be dual. Yeah, I can. I could be dual. So um, let's get to go. Yeah, actually, to go. so your your dual nationality. That's yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I would be like I I'm entitled to be dual nation, national. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um. Talking about um, parenting, that's what we um, this this meeting is all about. Mm. And um, before you become a mother, do you have any expectation? Like, what are your expectation mm. if in the future I'm gonna be 
mother, I'm going to have this, I'm going to do that and everything. And do you realize that expectation? Yeah, I think I, I always wanted to be a mom, definitely. I always was in my heart to be a mother. I always had that, I feel, that maternal draw, do you know. Um, I suppose at the time I didn't quite, you know, think about what that was going to entail, only that, you know, I felt that I would really enjoy being a mom. You know, I, I, I figured that. I come from a family of five of us, uh, five of us siblings. I'm the eldest of five. And... Um, you know, so, you know, I, I babysat a lot for my younger, you know, the younger siblings and stuff like that. Um, and it was kind of, so it was kind of a, a busy, busy kind of family home, you know. But, um, yeah, I can't say that I had a massive big expectation about what that was going to entail, only that I really believed that I would enjoy it, you know, that, that was for me. And especially then, you know, becoming a Christian when I was like 20, you know, kind of even more so, do you know what I mean? Even more so, I thought, you know, because God would be involved in it, in my rearing of her, you know, so that was important for me as well. Yeah. 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 That's, that's a very good point mm. there now, because I, I believe we need to sow a seed with the children you know, mm. when they were younger. So um, thank you for that information. Now that you are a mother, okay, as a new mother, mm. um, could you share your experience with us? Mm. You've already said that you had a hair, so mm. do you have support around you? Supporting? <clears throat> Just a, share your experience as a new mother, and yeah. then um, yeah. the stage is up to now. Yeah. Um, it was exciting. It was exciting. It was unexpected when it happened at the time. Um, so there was a bit an element of the kind of the shock surprise factor, you know, um, coming to grips with this new life, you know. Um, but um, I definitely had a lot of very hopeful expectation. I was very excited, you know, um, especially midway through my pregnancy. I was excited about having my, my child. didn't know whether it was a boy or a girl at the time. And um, <clears throat> so as a new mother, I would say it, initially the responsibility hit me very strongly. And um, I really gave that over to the Lord, you know, at that time, I really invited God to help me to bring up this child right, you know, I gave that baby to the Lord in my heart and through my prayers, you know, but, um, and then rearing her, it was, to me, it was, um, I suppose the, the one thing that I, I would share is that when I set my eyes on her, when she was born, um like i fell in love you know what i mean i just like the feeling was incredible i never had that feeling before you know people say that they you know would see a guy and fall in love instantly well for me when i saw my daughter for the first time i always say i fell in love do you know what i mean i really fell in love with her and um you know it was just a, a wonderful amazing miracle for me you know and um, i really appreciate that element I think um, on the practical side of it, mm -hmm. motherhood was harder than what I imagined. There was a lot of pain <laughs> even after having her, which was surprising. I wasn't prepared for because you read all about, you know, going through the pregnancy, what it's mm. going to be like and, you know, each term. Yeah. But when she came along and the after effects of pregnancy takes a toll on the, you know, on your body and on your emotions, mm. you know, on your own wealth, welfare, it was like, whoa, you know, I wasn't expecting that. So that was quite tough a bit, you know. Um, but I have to say that really she, you know, she was she was really the joy of my life. Do you know what I mean? And I absolutely did love being a mom, absolutely loved it. You know, even though it was tiring, it was exhausting initially. Um, demanded all your attention as you know as a mother as it mm. does um, I still enjoyed it I did enjoy it do you know what I mean I, I enjoyed yeah. having her she was an, an absolute joy to have to you know? have yeah. yeah so that for me was a big thing you know? yeah um, you mentioned um, a few things that first you get a support raising up mm. and you talk about um, you have it um, um, there's um, challenging after giving birth. So is that a postmortem, postpartum kind of um, 
Yeah, I didn't have like um, I didn't have the baby blues or any depression okay. as All such. Right. Okay. I think it was the physical toll on my body. It was exhausting, and it was okay. take took time to get over the birth. Okay. Um, I think it was the more physical aspect. I I did have the support of my parents and everything. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> they gave me a lot of support with her and stuff like that. Um, so that was so that was fine, you know. And her dad yeah. was there as well, you know what I mean. And he was, you know, seeing her and stuff like that. So all that was kind of good, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, I just don't think you're prepared for the toll it takes. I yeah. think that's what I'm trying to say, you yeah, know? Yeah, I know. Okay. So yeah, that was kind of a bit surprising. So you say you're single parents there now. So was there, was there any support of the dad um, along the line with her birth um, up to date? Um, not really, not really. Um, you know, I mean, he did remain in her life for the first few years, but it was challenging. Because it's challenging when you're not with that parent, you know what I mean. So that was the that was very challenging for both of both me and my daughter. Um, that was kind of you know the hard part of it, you know. And mm. um, sometimes I wish I could have taken that part out, <laughs> you know, because it would you know it would just been just been so much more enjoyable and easy, you know. But um, at the same time, you know, I think God uses everything, and you know, the scriptures tell us that God uses all things for good. To those who love him so mm. you know um he did use it for good i believe yeah. it, it changed me as a person you know mm. and um god used it for my benefit do you know what yeah. i mean and myself and my daughter you know we from very went from when she was young we had a very strong bond mm -hmm. you know we still have to this day do you know what i mean so we've always had a very very strong bond but yeah i, I you know i have to admit there was challenges definitely yeah. because when you're not on the same page when you're not seeing things the mm. same when you know, um, sometimes it could be quite anti antagonistic about things. So that was challenging. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So they were the kind of harder things, you yeah. know? Yeah. Thank you for that information. So um, how would you describe your, 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 your journey as a parent? As a parent? Up to date. Yeah. How would you? Yeah, I, th I think it's been one of the best things that ever happened in my life. I would say after me coming to know the Lord, I can honestly say that the second greatest joy for me has been rearing my daughter, definitely. And I'm so glad, um, you know, that I had the Lord with me in it, you know, because he was a great strength to me in it mm. and really helped me, especially when, the, you know, the more challenging um, situations when my daughter especially was hitting kind of early teens. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. it became very challenging you know up to that point it's kind of easier because you're you know your child you know listens to you, complies to you yes mm -hmm. I had you know times when she was pushing boundaries and mm -hmm. testing me mm -hmm. and yeah. I had to stand my ground and be yeah. firm with her mm -hmm. you know especially I think as a single parent you can't yeah. have your daughter disrespect you yeah. because you know it can get out of hand you haven't got yeah. that reinforcement in the house so mm -hmm. I didn't have that reinforcement, so I knew that was important to take stands mm -hmm. with her. Um, <clears throat> and that was fine when she was younger. It was hard, but it was it was a fine. But I think when she hit the teenage years, that for mm -hmm. me was the most challenging thing. Mm -hmm. um, the age so, of 12, 13, 14. Um, you know, she was kind of coming against me in a few things. And um, that was tough because with my own you know with my parents like my dad just laid the ground laid the rules and you didn't argue or fight with mm. him or he would okay. smack you throw you against the wall yeah, basically back then you know and yeah. um, you know we all had you know that yes. kind of style of parenting mm. back then but for me um i knew that i didn't want to lose my daughter i knew mm. that emotionally i didn't want to disconnect from her or have yeah. her disconnect from me as her mom so for me, I had to challenge myself and say, okay, and begin to pray and ask the Lord for wisdom. How do I deal with this? Mm. How do I deal with the way she's behaving that I'm not going to push her away from me, mm. but that I will have the wisdom and patience to just to draw her to back to me, mm. you know? So that was challenging because at times I just wanted to lose the plot with her, you know what I mean? With yeah. her rebellion and mm. with her coming against mm. me so much. But mm. actually the Lord gave me a lot of wisdom and he gave me the patience and grace just to bear it and to, to deal with her as with her personality, her type yeah. of personality. Okay. I had to take myself out of my own shoes and put myself in her shoes sure. to understand what's going on Which with her. 
and um, and I got through it and we got through it and I maintain we maintained that closeness do you know what I mean okay. and she began to come around and she began to change the friends that were influencing that behavior mm -hmm. so it actually really worked out quite good in the yeah. end it really I, did. Pick, I pick a lot of stuff from there now but that's going to lead me to the next question but one of the things I pick is you actually do this with God with mm. you you don't do it alone and then you didn't rely on your wisdom to be able to raise her. You rely mm. on the wisdom of God. Yeah. And yeah, of course, and then you just have to um, come to understand that personality to be mm. able to deal with that. Yeah, that absolutely. So, um, and that's lead me to the next question, which is in line with that style. In, in that way, so how would you describe your strengths and weaknesses as a parent? Talking <coughs> about what have been your strengths, mm. you know, um, you know, mm. um, raising a heart, and mm. what are your weaknesses, and now do you deal with the weaknesses? Okay, well, one thing really comes to my mind, and um, when I was 24 years of age, and I was a Christian living in London at the time, <clears throat> a friend of mine came to me, and he said, there is this woman that's coming to the church, who's a counsellor, and she's doing like a 10-week counselling kind of thing, and he encouraged me to go on this counselling, Thing, right this counseling um, teaching training and at the time I was like ah, no no I don't need this you know whatever I don't need to do this and but he was quite you know um, pushing me you know come on let's do this so I did it <clears throat> I did this 10 week counseling okay. it was a Christian type of counseling and um, it was very powerful very very powerful and when I had done this finished this counseling it absolutely took me on a whole massive journey and it really brought you know um it showed me what the impacts that my parents had had in parenting me you know mm -hmm. um, in particular i would say my father had a lot of impact on my life because he was very domineering mm -hmm. um you know um it's like you know, it was his way only kind of thing, you know, yeah. <clears throat> and it was kind of crushing for me, you know, as a person. And I had big clashes, a very bad relationship with him through my teenage years. So when I did this counseling course, it highlighted so many different areas for me, it highlighted the anger, it highlighted yeah. forgiveness, it highlighted how God wanted parents to, to nurture and bring up their, their children in the ways of the Lord. Yeah. And so, you know, with this um, training, it really helped um, unlock a lot of my own emotional pain and hurt mm. that I had buried inside of me. Mm. And when that all kind of came out, which took a series of months for it to come out to, you know, when that came out afterwards, I felt like I grew up two feet on the inside. I really transformed. I really changed my life. And um, I think because I received a lot of wholeness, as a result of dealing with my issues and looking inside myself and not blaming anybody else, but just looking inside of me where I was damaged and how I mm. could repair that damage and how God could help me to um, deal with that. I think that was like huge for me because it gave me strength to know how children can be easily wounded, easily damaged. And it helped me, um, maintain always um more like of a, a humble stance rather than i'm the parent and i know it all do you know that kind of way because I, it made me understand that i had to deal with her as a personality mm. and that's something that might have wounded me doesn't mean that's going to wound her do you know mm. so it could be something else mm. so i i was kind of sensitive to that and um and when i did do injury to her because sometimes we lose the temper and what have you um, I just quickly apologized, you know what I mean? I quickly would apologize, I quickly would resolve issues with her. And I would also give her opportunities to just come and discuss things. If we were clashing heads about things, I would invite her to come and discuss what's going on for her. And then I would discuss with her what's going on for me and why I needed something done or whatever it might be, you know? And I think that really helped. I think that really helped both of us, you know what I mean? Uh, I think it gave her expression. I think the one thing I will say is for me, I always felt it was really, because I suppose I didn't have it so much, I really felt it was important for her to express her own personality and be allowed to express it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So that was, for
for me, I think that was one of the strengths that I could say that I did um, help build confidence in herself, in her own expression, mm. you know, mm. and creative expression. Which so. is which is very, very good because um, coming to self-realization that mm. you have to deal with yourself mm. and self-awareness, self-realization, then you seek help mm. for 10 weeks mm. to be able to understand yourself and be able to deal with, with her, mm. you know, and understand where she's coming from. And then that strengthened you to be mm. able to have that relationship with her and to that is actually a very 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 good point yeah yeah that's a very good point because um i i think myself i'll be in the same boat in my own case now my children is actually very quiet you know and then i didn't know at all that i was actually people are only so oh, they're good children and everything they do everything i ask them to do they don't you know they're actually looking at my personality as i was raising a hope um just at work school i don't think i have that much social life and everything so and they will be the same because that's this is what they say their mom doing but there's uh, um, a lot of problem in the house anyway that um might be affecting them one way or the other that i put in my head that's okay i don't want to add more to the problem they have but I have a student in school, or I, I don't want to mention student, I have somebody that um, had a bad um, anger issue, very, very bad. So because of that, she's in, uh, because of that person, I actually went to anger management course. Mm. But during the high anger management course, as I was on the course, I was seeing my seven, eight. <laughs> I, I went for somebody else, <laughs> but it, I was just actually, seen my help myself in that and i remember saying to um, um i remember one word that the the the, uh, the facilitator mentioned that he said um that we carried our experiences to anywhere we go that in any environment we go mm. and that was a same realization to me mm. and i know that i need to seek and help to be able to deal with that area myself mm. um because i know that carry i carried um my personality around her role well, mm. and i think i transferred that personality to my children they have their own personality but i was like this you should this is the way it should be done but i was able to you know let mm. them be like you say mm. just butter buttress your point there that that was coming to civilization and then try to seek help in that area and understand where they're coming from that you know we all you have four children or you have one children or you have two children or uh, one child two children they still have different personalities mm. and then you have to encourage them and i mean you have to understand their, their own personality and deal with them in that area so thank you for that uh, when it comes to weakness and their strength now if you want to compare your own parents aside to that of your parents what would um um what are the similarities and differences which were what are the things that you need you bring into your home parental style or something you said no and i can't do this i have to stop <laughs> oh no i can't let my children go through this yeah mm. <clears throat> i would say that um my mom was a really good homemaker like excellent homemaker always had the house spotlessly clean you know, always had the fresh linen on the beds, you know, sh sh it was all the polishing was done every week. <laughs> My mom was an excellent homemaker. But for me, because as a single mom, I had to compromise this because I was working as well. So I was rearing my daughter and I was working and I was involved in ministry in the church. So I had a lot going on in my life and it's like I wasn't going to be able to do everything. And I wanted to have the time with my daughter you know so for me i suppose uh, homemaking wasn't my absolute priority so it was like i had to kind of be more lapsed on that in a way because it was like i didn't want to be there cleaning the house all day when my daughter was home and then not have time with her so i knew that if i want to have that good time and nurture that time with her 
that that was probably going to lapse and I had made that compromise in myself I had to let that lapse so the other side of that is <clears throat> in a single parent house the difficulties that happen between um, myself and her father um, they caused that was kind of traumatic for both of us do you know what I mean I would say it was traumatic for me and it was traumatic for my daughter and um, so you know in that area that was difficult do you know what I mean and it you know it, I would have preferred that it that hadn't happened that you know we hadn't had that kind of difficulty in our in our relationship so um because that added um yeah it just added a lot of difficulty so those kind of are two areas I could say that you know there was kind of mm, I had to kind of let lapse a bit do you know what I mean that kind of lapsed mm. um social life was good you know I'm a very social person and to be honest with Rachel Rachel came everywhere with me so mm. whether I was going to church whether I was going to mm. holidays to see all my English friends because yeah, I had I'm lots of friends right. in London yeah. Yeah. um Rachel was with me from three months old she was flying over with me you know um I love going on holidays every year took her with yeah, me we went swimming and doing mm. everything together so that yeah. was always and she was involved with my friends with me always as well yeah. so she was always very a part of everything that I was doing you know um so that was good you know that that was that that was good so there's kind of good and bad I mean when I compare my childhood um being brought reared like we couldn't really afford to go abroad on holidays or anything so I had a lot more freedom in that side that I could take her abroad and everything because I was working and um, I could provide a lot for her because you know I had more more money because it was only one child mm. whereas in my with my upbringing and um, we didn't have so much do you know what I mean we were very mm. comfortable but we you know my parents couldn't be extravagant with us because you know there's quite a few of us so mm. um yeah um so you know it kind of balances out in a way doesn't it you know some yeah. things but um i have some people um some of the interview we had so far some people had a bad um uh, parenting um, you know bad time with their parents when they're growing up and unconsciously they brought that into the life oh of yeah absolutely that happens. and then um yeah and then they come to realization from that that oh this is coming i will be the same because i was the only girl and my mom is always like oh i will get take her to market i will get her something good she believed that the best way you can treat a girl or something is to buy her something but when it's come to tidy up clean up do the whole job of the whole house and everything she's like you are a girl, so I do a lot of work in the house. Mm. That I get scared of anything that's in the house because she's going to, um, uh, uh, she's going to be, she's going to deal with me. And I'll say, I'll say, um, because my dad passed on when I was only fifteen. She was, she raised up up, um, single and me like since I was eighteen and the last fifteen. And the last baby was seven so she was raised up like a single parent and she did a fantastic job and we're going to talk about that because there's still this notion that single parent could not raise a golly or a, a perfect um child or something we're going to come back on that note but for now um because it's going to be too long we're going to go on a break and this is a part one of this so coming back on the break now we go for the part two Stay tuned with us. Hope you enjoyed it so far. If you enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Ask any question. And then we always come back to the question. Are you being blessed? Is there anything that's similar to you, your, own, or your own case? Or has that be, this has been able to answer the question in your heart or your fears about parenting or something? Leave a comment. Um, 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 ask her any question if you want to. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. She has her own channel too. What's it? Mm. To tell Caroline Diadem. It's a prophetic, Christian prophetic channel. channel. So I'm going to leave the handle here um, so that you can head up to the channel if you want to hear about it. She is a prophetess and she's a good one for that matter. And then you go ahead up to her channel as well to learn. Well, stay tuned with us. We're just going for a break. 
but we're going to stop here because we don't want it to be too long it's already going to 30 minutes 20 minutes and then there's going to be part two when we come back but today let's say thank you mm -hmm. and appreciate our guests in the house beautiful caroline <laughs> she's so beautiful <laughs> so we're coming back see you later on bye